Hey guys, TikTok Sully here, or just Sully, and today I wanted to bring you guys a brand history video on Louis Vuitton. Now Louis Vuitton is one of the biggest, if not the biggest luxury brands in the world. And this was something that was inevitably going to happen when you take a look at how the brand grew over the years. So today we'll be taking a look at Louis Vuitton and how it became the greatest luxury brand to exist. Kicking it off, Monsieur Louis Vuitton was born in 1821 in the small rural town of Anchet in France. His mother died when he was just 10 years old and his father remarried to a woman who became Louis Vuitton's stepmother. She wasn't the nicest of people to him and the two didn't really get on well. So with this kind of a household in a small rural town where opportunities were limited, Louis Vuitton decided to leave at the age of 13 or 14 and move to the capital Paris. This was 1835 so life was a bit different then and transport wasn't all that common. So Louis Vuitton actually traveled by foot to get there which took him a total of two years to do in which he worked odd jobs along the way to earn money and shelter. He arrived in 1837 when he was 16 and with him being being a fresh and eager adolescent, he was ready to start his work life. During this time, box making and packing was a very respectable craft which he was aware of, so he pursued this line of work by becoming an apprentice for another established box maker by the name of Marchier Marichel. Being a box maker required you to make custom made travel trunks and then you would personally load and unload the boxes for your clients. Marchier Marichel was an already established matier for the upper class of Paris, so it was the perfect start for what Louis Vuitton would later achieve. By 1851, a French revolution was taking place in which Napoleon III became the Emperor of France and this actually worked out in the favour of Louis Vuitton because the wife of the Emperor Eugene de Montillo hired Louis Vuitton to become her personal box maker and packer and this opened the doors for him to take on royal clients for the rest of his years. By 1854 Louis Vuitton had got unmarried which led him to leaving Monsieur Marichel's workshop with the desire to open his own workshop and thus the first Louis Vuitton matier was established. Four years later in 1858 Louis Vuitton's most revolutionary moment took place when he created a rectangle shaped luggage trunk and this was a huge deal in box making at the time for a number of reasons. First, the luggage trunks commonly used in those days had a dome shaped top to accommodate water runoff so they couldn't be stacked and took up too much space when being packed. And secondly, they were made of leather which wasn't the most practical of materials due to its tenderness and heavy weight. So Louis Vuitton's invention was a new advancement in trunk making and the new models were made out of a grey canvas material which made the trunks lighter and he also figured out how to make them more waterproof so the need for the old style basically became incompetent and many people attribute this turning point to the birth of the modern luggage. After this Louis Vuitton's popularity grew even further which forced him to expand his workshop to a different region of France in which he continued to supply to high profile clients until 1870 when the French outbreak took place in the form of the Franco-Prussian War. By the time the war had subsided Louis Vuitton's workshop had been looted and destroyed along with the rest of France so he once again decided to set up shop in a more upper class area this time concentrating even more so on luxury. By 1872, Louis Vuitton had developed an even newer luggage trunk to replace his grey luggage trunk as Louis Vuitton's trunks were being copied by box makers everywhere right from the beginning. So he introduced the Rayi canvas which was made up of red and white stripes to help differentiate his product. This new design still wasn't working as imitators just copied that. So he updated the stripe design to a beige and brown canvas which he used up until 1888 where he further updated it into a checkerboard canvas and this became the first variation of the Damier canvas that the brand still uses today. Meanwhile, Louis Vuitton's son Georges Vuitton had joined the company and Louis Vuitton as a brand continued growing and thanks to the introduction of this new and unique canvas, the Louis Vuitton brand was officially able to become a symbol of luxury among the upper class. Louis Vuitton continued working up until 1892 when he sadly passed away and this made room for his son Georges Vuitton to take a hold of the brand in which he planned to continue the legacy of his father while simultaneously growing the brand globally in hopes to establish it as the number one luxury brand in the world. World. His first plan of action was to take the brand to the Chicago World Fair which took place in 1893 to showcase what the French nation had produced in the travel accessory sector with Louis Vuitton. The brand got a great response at the fair and Georges sold every piece of Louis Vuitton luggage that he brought with him. In response to this reaction, a businessman by the name of John Wanamaker was in attendance and he took particular interest in Louis Vuitton's luggage and saw the potential it had. So he proceeded to get in business with Georges to bring Louis Vuitton luggage to America by selling it in his department store. And this this really helped establish Louis Vuitton as a luxury brand in America because it was one of the first European brands to infiltrate America. By the end of the 1800s, Georges introduced another plan of action to Louis Vuitton by creating the iconic monogram canvas which was made up of an interlocking LV and flower motif to further help fight against counterfeits as the brand was being copied even more frequently by now. And before the 1800s was over, Georges' son Gaston Louis Vuitton had now joined the brand. Moving into the 1900s, things got even more lucrative for the Louis Vuitton brand as 
as the transport industry was growing even more, so the need for luggage was also growing. In 1901, the father and son partnership between George and Gaston introduced another item to their brand, this time being the steamer bag, which had multiple uses and was intended to complement their trunks, as it could be stored inside to separate things such as clean and dirty clothing. By 1914, Louis Vuitton had grown so large that they opened a bigger Paris store on the Champs-Élysées, and this was actually the biggest luggage store in the world at the time, which led them to gaining even more customers, including the likes of Coco Chanel. By 1930, another bag was introduced to the brand, this time the Keypole, which was intended to be used for lighter traveling, and it's still used for that reason today. And because the Keypole was received so well, Georges and Gaston complemented this invention with a handheld version of the bag, which was the Speedy, and again, this bag is still produced by the brand today. The invention of the Speedy was an important moment for Louis Vuitton, because this was actually the first handbag that was available to the public, and the first variation of it came in a 30 centimeter size. The reason I mentioned the length of it was because even though this was a convenient size, another famous customer of Louis Vuitton by the name of Audrey Hepburn later requested for a slightly smaller variation of the Speedy handbag to be made, in which they complied and produced it in a size 25, and this led to the introduction of the Speedy 35 and 40 sizes, which are all signature models within their range today. In 1934, Louis Vuitton introduced yet another handbag, this time by the name of the Alma, and this had actually been introduced a few years earlier as a special order for Coco Chanel, but in 1934, Chanel had finally given them permission to be allowed to release the bag to the public. And by 1966, another iconic bag was introduced known as the Papillon. Before this, in 1936, the second generation of Louis Vuitton being Georges had sadly passed away, leaving control to his son Gaston Louis Vuitton, and of course, Gaston continued to lead the brand the same way his father and grandfather did. Thanks to the advancement of technology, his first significant moment for the house was transferring the brand's iconic monogram canvas to even smaller products, because a new coating process allowed the canvas to be bent and molded into even smaller shapes, so this allowed for the introduction of things such as wallets and other variations of bags, and this opened the doors for men to be introduced to the luxury of Louis Vuitton. In the 1970s, Gaston sadly passed away, but not before he was able to make Louis Vuitton a universal sign of luxury and wealth across the world, and the brand had finally reached its goal of becoming a universally recognized luxury brand. By 1987, thanks to the current corporate climate at the time, Louis Vuitton agreed to a merge with Moet Chandon, which introduced us to LVMH, which has since gone on to become the biggest luxury conglomerate in the world. And in 1996, the brand revised their Damier Bar monogram, which was really the beginning of the modernization of the Louis Vuitton brand, because just a year later, in 1997, they introduced their first creative director, being Marc Jacobs. Marc Jacobs was called in because the Louis Vuitton monogram had become overly saturated at this point, and it needed a fresh renewal. So Marc Jacobs set the narrative for what we know to be the modern Louis Vuitton today. He introduced a lot of new things to the brand, such as its ready to wear lines for both men and women, and I'll perhaps go into more detail on Marc Jacobs' time at Louis Vuitton in a separate video, because he did do quite a bit for the brand, and it definitely needs its own video to do it justice. But as I said, this set the standard for what we know to be Louis Vuitton in today's day and age, and it allowed for other creative directors to take a hold of the brand, such as Kim Jones and Virgil Abloh. In 2006, the brand introduced the Damier Azur pattern to give customers a more radiant choice of colour, and then in 2008, it introduced the black Damier graphite pattern to uphold the white Azur and add some more variety to its offerings, and all three of these patterns are modern symbols of the Louis Vuitton we know today. And the last noteworthy product to mention of Louis Vuitton is their Never For Woman's handbag, which was introduced in 2007 and has since gone on to become their best selling handbag due to how well suited it is for the modern woman. Since all of this, Louis Vuitton has continued to be the biggest symbol of luxury in the world and as I said at the beginning of this video, it's the greatest luxury brand to exist. And hopefully after learning more about the brand, you can see why that is. I love Louis Vuitton myself, I'm someone that upholds Louis Vuitton's weight as the greatest luxury brand in the world, even though in today's fashion climate, there is some serious competitors such as Chanel or even Gucci, but with all this heritage and beautifully crafted and designed pieces, Louis Vuitton has a special place in my heart and is actually something that I grew up looking towards as the pinnacle of luxury, which is why I was so interested in learning about the history of the brand. So hopefully this helped you guys understand that as well. But that brings me to the end of this video, hope you guys enjoyed, if you did, don't forget to hit that like button as it always helps and also let me know down below what you guys think of Louis Vuitton as I'm definitely interested in reading your guys' opinions. Also, don't forget to follow me on my Instagram which is TikTok solely and I'll be sure to leave a link to that down below in the description and if you're new here and you're interested in fashion then make sure you also hit that subscribe button by clicking down over there somewhere or you can just click on this icon because this is also a subscribe button. But that's all from me today, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.